Well, today we're going to talk about how to design and simulate uh, filters. Uh, here we're talking about designing a low band, low pass filter, a high pass filter, and a band pass filter using uh, Keysight ABS simulation software. Uh, before we do that, uh, we'll first design the low pass, then we'll design the high pass, and then we'll combine the low and the high pass to get a band pass filter. For this design today, we'll be using uh, five elements uh, for the designs, uh, 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 LC elements. And for this, we'll be using the Chevy Chev uh, uh, filter designs as well. So let's go. So what we're gonna do, we'll start by uh, uh, calculating our uh, the variables for our divide our elements uh, here we've done calculation for the low pass filter uh, using the Chevy Chev uh, G values uh, this is a constant that's used to calculate the inductor and capacitor uh, 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 values uh, based on number of elements in the filters for the low pass and the high pass filter, we'll be using five elements uh, each. Uh, first, we design because for the Chevy Chev, there's there are standard values uh, of which there's a table where all these values are stated. So for this, we'll be using a 0 0.1 dB ripple uh, for the five elements. So we we'll use that uh, fa that. Uh, uh, values on the G G value tables from service to do our calculation and we arrive at the inductor and capacitor value as shown here. So we'll, we'll kick on now. We have our uh, low pass filter design here and we have three element inductors and two element capacitors. So we have we've calculated our inductors and uh, capacitor values, which will now impute in our ADS schematic to for the design. So here we have our ADS schematic. So we'll now impute our values so we can go. On. We have three inductors. And two capacitors. So we will go uh, a basic component. I will put our values in.
So we're just importing these values here. include our S parameter in order for us to be able to to simulate our circuit so we go from 0 0.1 uh, because our we are using a cutoff frequency of 27.5 gigahertz so we we'll simulate from 0 0.1 to 60 using a step of 0. 0, 01 ahead. So if we run this, we get so we we'll now include our rectangular plot and select S1 and S2 or S1 or S2 using a DB scale and this is our our plot so you can see that we have here we put this here we have a of 26.14 and here if we look at the minus 3 db a cut to cut point uh, this one is about 31.35 so what our point here is uh, 26 and we have our 3 db point of 31.3 so when you look the average of these two should give us that about 27 uh, so this is for the for the low pass and we'll now design the high pass and see what we get so if we go, we have our our high pass value here, which we have calculated as well. We are using five elements as well for the for the high pass. And here we have our G value from the service G value table to be G1 up to G5. So, but for this, for the high pass, we only need the G1, the G2, and the G3, and because G1 is same thing as G5. And G2 and G4, they are set the same. So, every, anywhere you see G1, you can use G5 as well. So, we're using here a cutoff frequency of 24.7, because for the, high, for the low pass, we use 27.5. And for the high pass, it was using 24.5. So if you look at the linear, uh, linear average of 27.5 and 24.5, it will be having something like 26 gigahertz. And this is a bandwidth of about 3 gigahertz. So have we done our calculation? Uh, this is the values for the 
inductors and capacitors we obtain for the plots. This is our standard, our standard high pass filter design, which we'll be using. This is five elements comprising of three capac two capacitors and three inductors. So having calculated this using the conservation uh, 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 high pass feature design. So we'll now create here a new schematic for the high pass feature. So imputing our values as before, uh, we we'll create the design first. So we have here two inductors up and three, uh, sorry, three, yeah, three inductors and two capacitors. Add our terminator as well. So imputing our values here, we have for the capacitors we have uh, C1, uh, C, both of them C2 and C3 here, uh, which we represent as C4, C2 and C4 in the in the plot to be same value. And first one here, we have L1 and L5 here on the plot, uh, same. And L2, which is our L3 on the plot there, so we have as 0 0.5. So as like, um, like before, we have our values in here now. So we add a S parameter to be able to simulate our table, our our device. So we start as before from 0 0.1 to 60. 60 gig because we are simulating for 24.7 now. So this is step of 0, 0.0. Uh, so we now we make uh, just observe an error now. We make corrections. We supposed to have three inductors. Here. This is not a capacitor. It's supposed to be an inductor. So 
to put in doctor room. And uh, over the same as that, that this one. So have our bodies in now. So if we simulate this and let's see what we get. Let's check our values again. Probably we've had some wrong input today. Ah, okay, we have uh, the error here. This is not 10 because we are simulated 28 uh, over 20 gigahertz, so we cannot have, we can't have 10 gigahertz there. So if we run this now, yeah, voila. So this is our plot, what we're supposed to have. So let's change our, our graph input now, the y axis. We'll take it from up to, let's see, up to 40, up to minus 40. This is step of 10. So this is our hypers filter. So our design now pass up to 3 dB, we have So this is our high pass filter. We will now go on now to combine our high pass filter and the low pass filter to obtain our band pass filter. So we create a new schematic called band pass filter. So we we'll copy from the low pass fit from the first, you can use the high pass filter first. To the new circuit, new schematic. Yeah, we can take this off for one limit. I will copy the Okay, that's the high pass filter. I'll copy the low pass filter. Add to that to make our band pass filter. So also, we we'll be needed this session. This. So we we'll combine the two. This is our high pass. The signal will pass as a frequency up to 24.7. And the low pass will take up to, we allow a signal up to 27.5. So we now have signal between 24.7 and 27.5. So here, this will change this now to 32. And we could check our circuit now to make sure everything is okay. So if we run this, yeah, we need to put the S parameter here. We need to put that. 
Just I copy that. So like before, it should be between 0 0.1 and 60. The step of 0 0.01 gigahertz. As so if we run the simulation now, I put this S11 and S21. So this is our purpose filter. Do an option here. Because here we, we don't have 250, we just change the wires from here. We can see up to 50. Okay, maximum zero in a step of 10. So if we say okay, so this is our bandpass filter, which looks quite good so we have this our 3 db point so the 3 db point frequency and we have the our center frequency it happens to be somewhere there to be 26 gigahertz so which is the difference between our two bandwidths uh, 27.5 and 24.5 so the center frequency uh, is uh, 26 gigahertz so let's complete our tutorial on how to design. Uh, once again, uh, these are the parameters for the design. We have for the high pass filter, we are using five element shape shape filter with a 0 0.1 dB ripple. And our cutoff frequency for the high pass filter was 24.5. And for the low pass filter, we're using the same five elements with the same uh, ripple and our characteristics uh, impedance was 50 ohm while for our low, low pass filter we used 27.5 so 27.5 um, a center between 27.5 and 24.5 was a 26 gig that's what we have in our simulation result so that's for the bad pass filter there m3 a 30 volts if db okay 30 or 26 gig which is not bad so thank you for watching our video so i will design the high parts filter with using a, com a combination of uh, the low pass and high pass filter uh, to define to design the a bandpass filter, we will now proceed to try to design and simulate a bandpass filter by itself, not a combination of both now, designing a bandpass filter from scratch. So from here, we have, we'll be using again uh, the Chevy Chevy G value to design a Chevy Chevy bandpass filter. But this time, or like last time when we used five elements, We'll be using uh, three elements each to de to design the Chevy Chef band pass filter. But for this design, we'll be using uh, a 0 0.5 dB, dB ripple. Uh, as we all know, uh, the Chevy Chef uh, curve has uh, ripples on the top post on the on the curve. So we, for this now, we're using uh, we're designing for 5G. Uh, which is um, uh, 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 for the mm wave band and for this design we'll be using 26 uh, gig but we're not using the 26 gigahertz directly uh, we want to design this uh, going the route of bandwidth uh, for this particular design we'll be using a design procedure 
to first design a low pass filter uh, with the cutoff of the low pass filter uh, by subtracting the two frequency band the cutoff the f1 and f2 these are the two frequency band will be defining uh, in order to arrive at the bandwidth which we shall use to calculate the 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 uh, the elements uh, values of the low pass filter so here uh, we have a series uh, conductor we have series conductor and we have series capacitor here for the low pass filter session we'll be using l1 and l3 and c c2 value that will be for the low pass filter why the high pass filter will be the cap the two capacitors in series the number of series here c1 c3 and l2 doctor so for the for, that is for a series in uh, uh, for a series inductor we will add a series capacitor that's what we have there and for a short capacitor we add a, a series a short inductor so basically that's what uh, although it's not very shown here but basically that's the the method we've applied so we're using for the f1 uh, we have uh, 24.5 gigahertz and f2 uh, 27.5 gigahertz so if we have uh, these two gigahertz it will give us a bandwidth of uh, 3 gigahertz for the design and doing the calculating from these two uh, uh, frequencies uh, we have a, give us a, an average frequency of 25.96 although my target was 26 gigahertz as the overall center frequency of the uh, band pass filter the two uh, the two frequencies one is uh, uh, going to go for the 27.5 will generally be the low uh, low low pass filter as a uh, quarter frequency what the 24.5 will be the high pass filter quarter frequency so having done this uh, math, uh, mathematical manipulations, we arrive at the values of the, the low pass, the low pass uh, uh, elements uh, here, which is L1 and L1, L3. Uh, here we have the L1 is equal to L3 by value, and we have the C2 here, that's the low pass filter section. The high pass filter section, we have the C1, and C3 having the same value, while the L2 is 0 0.032 nanohertz. So we will now proceed to do our uh, design with ADS, because we are using AD, uh, PSIG ADS as our simulation software. So we create a new schematic, uh, we just call it a bandpass filter uh, 2, uh, because we had a bandpass filter before, uh, which we design using by adding a low pass a low pass filter to the high pass filter, which works exactly fine. So for this now, we do a direct a band pass filter using a three element. Because in the first design, we use five elements each. So for this, we are using three elements for the two sessions: three for the low pass and three for the high pass. So if we create a schematic. And we just create uh, create our our system. We have three inductors and three capacitors.
got template so here which is uh, basically two functions act as our tone and a terminator because we're working with 50 ohm uh, 50 ohm characteristic repeaters so our terminator here is at both both inputs and outputs 50 ohms each so because our design if uh, if is a 50 ohm output and input impedance system So we'll now enter our values. We we'll have our C1 at 0 0.009 Henry. Yeah, C1, two of them are the same value. C1 is equal to C3. So we we'll enter that value nice and easy. Yeah, our L2, uh, which is uh, this this one here, is 0 0.0. 32 nano Henry. So on this the other part of it, we have our L1, which is the same thing as our L3, uh, which is 0, 0 0.4 L1 and uh, 4.23 nano Henry. Uh, which is the same value here. So what we will have left now is our C3, which here is 1.14 picofarad, uh, 1.164 picofarad. So we have our values in now, with nice and easy. So the next thing we will now do, we need to add an S parameter, which will enable us to simulate and display our results. So for this, we will define our simulation uh, parameters. So because we are designing here for a, a cutoff of 24.5 and 27.5, we'll just make start at, at 10 gig, 10 gigahertz. Then we we'll run it up to 40 gigahertz. Then we we'll use a step of let's say 0 0.01 gigahertz our, as our step. So if we simulate this, uh, we should have a nice and easy curve. So having simulated it now, all we need to do is add our rectangular plot, uh, which we will get from this side of the plot page. So if we add it here, then we select, because our interest is our S11 and our S21, the inputs and outputs of the circuit. So we do this, we have a nice and easy uh, graph here. So you can see that our plot is exactly, well, we have the report there, and we have our report here, that's what service curve do. And there are other curves. If you want a nice and smooth curve, then you, you can use other uh, filter design uh, met, method, methods. So here we can see that if we put our value here, we have for the the first part of the plot, which comes from here, we have the cutoff as 24.75. Remember, we're designing for 24.5. So this is 24.75. And the other, other cutoff, it gives a 27.33. And our other second cutoff was 27.5. So if we go for the middle, the center frequency now, we have the center frequency of 25.64. Uh, so, and uh, from our calculation, we have 25.96. And this is a nice and uh, good result. But if we were to, to go for 
to get our exact uh, values of the yeah but if you if you watch here we have uh, 24.75 and 27 so if you do if you compare these two results you discover uh, we have up to 2.67 2.6 plus uh, bandwidth which for our design is not that bad but if we want a more accurate result we can do an optimization of this graph so we can just opti optimize our uh, circuit uh, in order to have a better uh, performance result but this on the zone is not bad because you can see we have for the f f f1 of 24.75 we have a return loss uh, uh, s s11 of for minus 45 and we have minus 37 here for the second band pass second band pass a uh, second cut off and for the overall for the center frequency you have minus 60 db here which on its own is a very good one but if we, if we look at the at minus 3 db points we discover that at the minus 3 uh, this is if we can pull it so we get a more accurate Okay, at our minus three minus three uh, three uh, three db we have frequency of 24.25 and 27.75 which uh, which is so, uh, the, the, what they call uh, the beam width on the zone it's not that bad so overall uh, this is a very nice circuit and at the end of this uh, the aim of this is just to teach you or make you understand how to design uh, a band pass filter using like uh, for using a bandwidth to determine uh, your the values of your design circuit because the initial value that you go for you have the inductors and capacitor which you now use to add to calculate uh, to calculate the values of your hyper the hyper session uh, basically if you calculating for any frequency band uh, you can apply your values to this equation just change for example if you want to design for maybe 2.4 gigahertz and uh, then you look for uh, a bandwidth so you can get the f1 f2 just substitute your value and uh, then determine uh, what uh, db uh, db that is you can use this equation if we are designing a shelf shelf uh, band, band pass filter and then you can determine uh, which uh, ripples you want because this value these values here are the values for three three section three elements uh, g values so if you are designing for example for 0 0.01 db ripple then obviously this value will change you need to look at uh, the G, G table you can find it in any standard textbook, and uh, so you can pick values that correspond to the the number of uh, elements you are designing for, and the DB ratio, the DB ripple that you're using. I hope this helps uh, in building your understanding of how to design a band pass filter. Uh, thank you for watching. Don't, please don't uh, forget to subscribe. I hope you have a nice watch.